Hey guys, welcome to another First Impressions episode. This time I'll be going over the runes and masteries for the support role in Season 4. As you may have noticed, all of the gold income items names have been changed, so my first two episodes are now outdated. With that being said, always remember that what I'll be covering in this video is subject to change until the patch is officially live. If you still haven't watched my other videos about the vision system and the new items, I suggest you also do so. So let's cut with the chit chat and get to what really matters. Riot is looking to differentiate every kind of rune, meaning your marks will serve as your offensive runes, seals will be your defensive runes, and glyphs will be your utility runes, just like with the mastery tree. You'll be able to further define yourself with a wide choice of quintessence at your, at your disposal. As of right now, runes haven't changed that much in the PvE, but the champions have. In the past, a lot of supports have used magic penetration marks for extra poke damage in lane, mainly because they wouldn't scale with AP, meaning mag magic pen would be the better choice for early and mid game power. What you should notice is that now a lot of champions utility skills actually scale with AP and you'll have a lot more gold at your disposal as well. So is magic penetration that good right now? Let's see, Soraka, Lulu, Zyra, Sona, Fiddlesticks, Annie, Lissandra, Nami, Janna and a lot of other support champion skills scale with AP. Lulu's movement speed increases now the scales with AP as well, just like the ED granted by Janna's shield. In Season 3, you still wouldn't think twice about using magic penetration marks, but now you'll actually be able to build your items, so you keep scaling into the late game. This is why I think that flight AP or scaling AP marks should be considered a lot more often. Another ramification of the changes that I should point out is that the supports will no longer focus solely on getting oracles, wards and utility items. They'll be able to deal more and more damage as time goes on. Since they didn't have the opportunity to do so in Season 3, a lot of people chose to go for flat magic resistance glyphs to mitigate early game damage. I think that scaling magic resistance glyphs will also have to be considered now because of that. Taking armor seals, be it flat or scaling runes, is still going to be highly important because you'll still have to withstand the damage from the opponent's basic attacks. If you're playing with champions that scale with armored magic resistance, however, like Leona or Tarek, you should probably consider giving armor marks a try. As for quintessences, they'll still be up to your playstyle really, but my current favorites are still flat HP, gold per 10, flat AP and movement speed, depending on what champion I'm playing. Let's move on to something a little more practical, masteries. There are a lot of changes in mastery trees, but I'll stick to the ones that I think will be the most important for the support role. First of all, let's take a look at the offense tree. The exhausted knight mastery is gone, so you won't actually need to spend a point in this tree now. However, there are a few masteries that could potentially be picked up every now and then. The sorcery mastery will give you 5% cooldown reduction, mental force gives you plus 16 AP, 0.89 AP per level, while the devil edge sword may make your basic attacks harassment slightly better, even though you'll take additional damage if you choose to use it. And finally, the arcane mastery will grant you 8 flat ability power. While this may sound fun and all, as a support I never choose to spend points in the offense tree because it'll either reduce your utility late game or your defensive stats in the early game, so have that in consideration if you're planning on going for offensive points in your mastery tree. Now let's take a look at the defensive part of the tree, and there's a lot of good stuff here so bear with me. Tough skin shouldn't be picked up by anyone other than the jungler because it only affects damage taken from jungle monsters, not minions. Enchanted armor is one of those masteries that you always need to consider. If you spend 2 points on it, you'll get an increase in bonus armor and magic resistance for 5%. Then you'll have to make a tough choice, either get 2 points in block, which will reduce incoming damage from basic attacks by 2, 2 points in recovery, which will grant you plus 2 health per 5 seconds, or to spend 1 point in each. If you choose to spend only one point in block, you won't be able to get the Unwielding Mastery, which reduces all incoming damage from champions by 2 if you're melee and by 1 if you're ranged. You can also spend 3 points in Veteran Scars, which will get you 36 HP, moving on to Juggernaut and thus getting an extra 3% max HP. 3 points in Hardiness will get you plus 5 armor, 3 points in Resistance gets you plus 5 magic resistance, evasive reduces the damage taken from AoE magic damage by 4% which could be 
great when playing against the Swords of Fatal Sticks, for instance. Reinforced Armor reduces damage taken from critical hits, which you should also consider uh, getting against the likes of Ash. Perseverance regenerates a percentage of your missing health every 5 seconds, and Swiftness reduces the effectiveness of slows by 10%. Now, if you get 3 points on Perseverance, you'll be able to pick up Second Wind, which will increase all sources of incoming heal by 10% when below 25% HP. This might not sound like a huge deal, but if you're playing something like Tarek, Sona, Alistair or Soraka, you may be able to heal bait some of your opponents. Tenacious will increase your armor and MR for each nearby enemy champion. Runic Shield will let you start the game with 50 HP shield that will regenerate every time you respawn and Legendary Guardian will reduce the duration of crowd control effects by 15%. I know, there's a lot of stuff in here and I actually urge you once again to try out these changes for yourself and not to take everything I said for correct. I will however be leaving you a few examples of the trees that I feel like everyone should consider. Do bear in mind that if you go for 21 points in the defensive tree, you will be missing out on a lot of awesome masteries in the utility tree. It may be worth it, however, if you're playing with something that needs to get close to the enemy to be effective like Leona, Tarek or Thrash. And finally the utility tree. Allow me to give you a rundown of all of the masteries at your disposal. Scout increases the cast range of wards and trinkets by 10%, and this is actually pretty neat. Those tricky dragon wards and whatnot are now much easier to place thanks to this little mastery. Meditation will grant you up to 3 mana regen per 5, Fleet of Foot grants you up to 1.5% movement speed, and Phase Walker reduces the casting time of recall by 1 second. If you spend 3 points in med Meditation Mastery, you'll be able to get Strength of Spirit. It'll give you health regen equal to 10% of mana regen. Alchemist increases the duration of potions and elixirs by 10%, which I actually recommend taking if you enjoy starting with potions for extra aggression. Summoner's Insight reduces the cooldown of Summoner spells by up to 10%, and Conjurer will increase the duration of the units and traps that you summon for 10%. It does not work on the wards, however. Greed will help you out with your gold income by giving you 1.5 gold every 10 seconds. Runic Affinity increases the duration of buffs for 20%. Vampirism will give you lifesteal and spell vamp, and you'll also be able to get Culinary Master if you spend a point on Alchemist, which will upgrade your health potions to biscuits that will restore an additional 20 HP and 10 mana instantly upon consumption. If you spend 3 points on the Greed Mastery, you'll be able to spend a point on the Scavenger Mastery. It grants 1 gold each time an ally kills a light minion, so it actually adds up to your gold income items and allows you to keep your gold income flowing even better. Wealth will increase your starting gold by 40, Expanded Mind will increase your maximum mana, Inspiration will grant you up to 15 XP every 10 seconds while near a higher level allied champion, which will help if you start falling behind levels like supports usually do. Bandit will grant you bonus gold every time you're involved in either a champion kill or assist if you're melee, and plus 3 gold each time an enemy champion is attacked if you're ranged. It can occur more than once per 5 seconds though. Intelligence will reduce your cooldowns and activated item cooldowns, and Wanderer will increase your movement speed while out of combat. For now, my favorite masteries are definitely Culinary Mastery, mainly because I spam a lot of potions during the laning phase, Greed plus Scavenger because Gold Income is always great, Wealth plus Bandit because, well, Gold Income is always great, and the Inspiration Mastery. There are a lot of options here. I can even see melee supports go for 0921 thanks to the Wanderer Mastery. Over the last couple of months, a lot of people have asked me what runes and masteries I use for each champion. I have no problem telling you that, but each mastery page and rune page should be tailored specifically to your needs and to your playstyle. That's why guides don't work for everyone. A rune page or a mastery page may be great for me, but it may be awful for a lot of other players. I urge you guys to take this video into consideration and try out a few different pages of your own. Reach your own conclusions, and you'll see that you'll become better players for it. And with that being said, we reached the end of this first impressions episode. I know it was a little more boring than what I usually go for with my videos, but masteries and runes are sort of a boring topic. They're great, but they're somewhat annoying to comment on. Stay tuned for my next and hopefully final episode of first impressions on pre-season 4. It'll be about the incoming champion changes. So once again, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to PM me on Facebook as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Base Desires channel, and follow my Facebook, Twitter, and stream. As always, good luck, have fun, and until next video.